welcome to this meeting of the Willoughby Slick Board of Education. It is Monday, July 8, 2019. We are at the uh, Board of Education building, which is at 3553 Pierce Boulevard in East Lake, Ohio. Mr. Parkinson, will you call? Oops, and it's 7 o'clock p.m. Mr. Parkinson, will you call the roll, please? Dr. Beal? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mrs. Warner? Here. Mrs. Here. Here. Mrs. Pachensky is uh, with her sister, helping her out. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ben is um, here to give us a uh, construction update, um, and he's going to give us an overview of all three projects. Okay, uh, we're going to start with uh, North High School, which is the building I'm most familiar with. This is a picture of the collaborative stairs in the uh, humanities wing. Uh, if you were to go there today, these steps are now done. This picture was actually from last week. Trim is up, it's sanded, all the joints are filled. Uh, this thing is ready to be uh, stained and varnished, which should happen in the next week and a half or so. In the meantime, everything you see at the bottom of the picture, the foreground is gone. They're putting the floor down. They're about a quarter of the way down the floor in that area right now. Typical classroom with a marker board and a projector that's on here. This marker material, this is actually not a marker board. It's fabric. It goes up like wallpaper, <coughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's like a marker board in that you can mark it and erase it. It's also magnetic. Very, very cool. The guys all like it. They all like a piece of it. We told them they can't have anything but the scraps. <laughs> uh, this is the neatest technology closet in the entire building. Any other closet you go into, it looks like a, a huge bowl of colored spaghetti that's just spilling out of the ceiling, but they know where all these tables are and where they go. Uh, there's about five tech closets throughout North High School, and all of them are pretty much moving along. We think in the next week and a half or so, they're all going to look uh, a lot like that, but it's pretty clean and pretty organized. This is a picture from the second floor looking down into student dining. All that heavy equipment's now out of there. The carpenters have actually started on the collaborative stairs that began today. That's in the lower left-hand corner of this picture. It's going to look a lot like the collaborative stairs in the humanities wing, just a little wider. That half-round wooden structure at the, uh, at the far end of that Hall, far end of the room is a smoothie station that all gets covered with Marlite panels. Those panels are supposed to arrive this week, and they all had to be fabricated to fit that radius. Uh, so we're all looking forward to seeing those go in. Meantime, the ceiling has all been painted, all the structure that you see up above there on the left hand side. That all gets drop grid ceiling clouds. It isn't wall to wall, there's sections of clouds so that if you were to look in between them, you could see the structure above exposed, which is all painted. That's to kind of uh, help with the sound attenuation. On the right-hand side where that articulated boom is, that's all dropped with ceiling. Uh, then that should start going in, I'd say, if not next week, the following week. <clears throat> the exterior of the building, this is looking from the media center windows, looking west towards the bridge, so that students at the end of, the hall, end of those, uh, either the STEM or humanities wing, have to get from one side to the other, they don't have to walk all the way around to the media center. The students have they can just go across the bridge. That looks gray right now. It's like that's a spray waterproofing over the exterior insulation panels. Uh, those all get metal composite panels, which are on site. They just have to start start putting them up. It's going to look very cool when it's done, especially with the landscape. STEM wing, this is the second floor of the science, technology, and math wing. All the painting is done. This picture is about a week and a half old. The acoustic panels that hang on the ceiling in the structure, what looks real fuzzy is act on the top of that are actually steel uh, uh, aircraft cable that hold these acoustic panels in place. They're in, they're a very soft white color, really looks neat, uh, but that's in place. Typical STEM classroom casework. This classroom, all the casework has been set. It's a biology class classroom. It's been set. The epoxy tops are in place. Ceiling grid, the grid is done. Tile is starting to go in. 
And we expect the flurry to start in these uh, classrooms probably in the next, uh, I'd say the next few days. They're really pushing hard on the flow throughout the building. One of the classrooms in A wing and the uh, STEM wing, this flooring is, uh, I think all but four of the classrooms are done. The flooring is coming along very well. The picture of the uh, surgery in the kitchen, the equipment, is which you don't see in place right now over all those electrical outlet boxes in the foreground. All the kitchen equipment, except a couple pieces, are on site. Most of it's set where it belongs. They are assembling it, hooking it all up. I would say in the next couple of weeks, if we were bold enough, we could fire some of these units up and make everybody lunch, which we won't do. <laughs> Auditorium lighting. This is not the theatrical lighting. These are all the house lights. They're in. This picture is about a week and a half old. The acoustic ceiling panels that go up in between the lights have started to go in. That entire row in front of the stage is in place. They're working on the second row. It's a slow process. These are big units. They are assembled on the ground and carefully lifted in place. Cable is already uh, there in place, and then they get uh, they get installed. It's really starting to take shape very, very quickly. The flooring in the gym is down. They started sanding it today. They expect uh, about a week and a half process to sand it. Week and a half to two weeks sand it. Get the striping going. In the meantime, they are going to sand and seal the east west side and the west side right away because the stairs, which have to go in there, the bleachers, are uh, due to arrive at the end of this week. So we're going to try to get them in there, get it shaken out, and they're going to be building those as they're finishing the rest of the gym floors. It's, 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 it's a very careful choreography, but these guys work together all the time. Exterior of the building, the only thing missing here are the exterior doors. And that hole in the middle of the wall is a louver to the second floor mechanical room. We've left that out on purpose to get equipment and the last of the big heavy tools like threaders, the things we really don't want to haul up and down the stairs. We'll take them out of there with the Picture of the front of the building, that gray on what we call the skateboard ramp is that waterproofing again. Those composite metal panels that go on there and the metal trim to keep the uh, parapet blocking and the uh, Parapet metal trim goes on to finish it all off. A couple pieces of glass are back order. Uh, I'd say in another week and a half, two weeks tops, that front will be done, with the exception of the brick pavers, which is what is this little half round uh, dirt half in the front that gets stamped concrete to look like brick, brick pavers. We've left that out on purpose so that equipment can get in and out of the building. Uh, in the background, the building that's been uh, already under underway in terms of demolition. In the foreground, a lot of the concrete and curves are already in place. A lot of the infrastructure is already in place. Wherever there's an open area of real estate, the site work contractor is pushing everybody out of his way, which is exactly what we want him to do. And moving forward on sidewalks and curves, getting ready for pavement. Longfellow, a little farther along in north, obviously. Uh, kindergarten, the collaborative area in A Wing. The furniture is in place, the cleaning, the heavy deep cleaning has been done. We're going to do one more uh, cleaning of the building and then one final walkthrough before school opens and dust everything down. But the, the, the furniture is there in place, the rugs are in place. We still have, like the X's on the uh, glass to make sure nobody puts their hand through the glass. We want everybody to make sure they realize there's glass there and it's just an empty hole. We were waiting a very long time for the tops on the lockers. They, they are in place. The gaps in the tow kick have been filled. The uh, flooring contractor was back there today. He'll be there for about another week, week and a half to get all the base in and the rest of the flooring in the center uh, by the media center on the first floor. A swing insulation for one of the sensory rooms, that's done. Uh, it took a while to get that in. There was some structural steel that they had to change up above there so that you're not hanging off the ceiling. You're hanging off of something very, very robust up above. So that's in place. The gym projector, the screen, took a little while to get that all focused, but it's done, it's in. I think we are literally down to a final cleaning in here and clocking around some of the hollow metal frames. Administrative office, somebody has already moved their boxes in, which is a good sign. That means everything's ready to go. And as soon as we get an occupancy permit, uh, we can turn everybody loose. They can get in there and start organizing their space. But the furniture is there, laptops are there, phones are there. We're good to go. This picture is probably a week and a half old. The scaffolding is gone. Painting is done. Flooring contractor was there today to start. 
the stairs, get rubber treads and tile, and the floor to the left on the first floor um, gets uh, uh, vinyl plank tile to, to complete the flooring. He really wanted the painter out of the way before he did the flooring. We couldn't help but agree with him. Exterior, as soon as we get a little more sidewalk uh, uh, in place here, they can get, uh, we can get the painters back to paint the underside of that. Uh, canopy, that's all we really have for the painters there, and they know be completely out, except the touch up in the punch. The bench that goes around the display case to the bottom of the stairs, the display cases on site. We're just again trying to play that uh, uh, the schedule between the flooring guys and the carpenters to come back and get that done. And that's a three sided display case, all glass. Uh, it'll be really pretty once it's, uh, once it's all done and wrapped up. Two dining projector, that's in place, that's done. We still have to paint the two ducts, the round duct to the upper right hand picture. We probably had to lower that duct work because it was just the right height when it kicked on that the lights started to sway a little bit. It really looked funny, so we said we probably ought to lower those ducts. So they got to get back out uh, and paint those ducts. So be part of the uh, punch up and uh, punch list and final touch. Grade four collaborative area. Again, it's done. Uh, I got to give kudos to Megan and Megan, the custodian, not Megan, the principal, who <laughs> is, uh, has done a great job. And I think she's there with uh, with Mike. Is that right? Is that his yes. name? Mm -hmm. Correct. They're really doing a great job organizing very quietly under the radar. They don't bother anybody, but uh, they've been they've been great. Uh, they've been in there for a few weeks now. Don't tell them they're doing part of my job because it might slow them up. You know? <laughs> Another great floor collaborative area. Again, the locker tops are in place. We've got to finish the base. At this point, that base is, if it's not going in today, it will probably be done by tomorrow. Uh, just another shot. Uh, the grade two area. Uh, this happens to be up again on the second floor. Furniture is in place. Flooring is done. The heavy deep cleaning is done. Locker bases are in place. Media center. The only thing missing here are the books, and they are actually on the first floor waiting. And after this picture was taken, probably no make it may have already started to move some of those up because the elevator is now operational to the information we can use it. Another shot of the exterior. Uh, we would be a lot farther along with the site work if it hadn't been for that pesky other building that we're trying to get out of the way. But that's uh, that abatement's done, demolition is underway, and they're they're on schedule, so. We don't expect any issues there. In a minute, this uh, sidewalk will be done. The rest of the uh, circular side uh, walkway around the building will be in place. Again, uh, we're not going to put a walk down and then drive heavy equipment over it as we're trying to mine the building. Uh, beautiful, venerable building. If you stood and looked out from the street, it's such a pretty building. But I'm going to say the same thing I've said in a lot of districts. The closer you got to this building, the more you realize just how how tired it was, and I'm, I'm not trying to offend anybody, uh, but it was uh, probably probably ready for uh, demolition to make way for the new one. Uh, South High School, uh, collaborative stairs. This is a little bit what the collaborative stairs at North High School are going to look like when they're done. I don't think this railing has the final coat of paint on it yet, but I know the staining is done in this picture, and they are already, uh, at this point, they're probably already varnished. They weren't for this day. Typical classroom, furniture's in place, flooring's in place. Uh, not all the furniture's there. Student chairs, for instance, haven't arrived yet, uh, but they will be. Competition, gym, striping, and bleed. All of it's done right now. You can see there's still some equipment spread out, but all of it's done. It's in place. I just talked to John this afternoon. Uh, so he's set there. The media center circulation desk is on its way. When it arrives, we're going to play. That is custom mill work. It's not kind of off the shelf or square blocking. Uh, tables or desks uh, that you see, like some of the casework in classrooms, this is all custom round and shaped. It's going to be very great. As soon as it's in place, the flooring will go down, and then again, uh, over at South, they'll be down to punch lift and touch up. Typical uh, administrative office, it's done except for the chair. Main entrance, vestibule, uh, they're working on base. The flooring is, according to John, the flooring is nearly finished in this entire area. There's still a couple pieces of glass to the back corner. Had to, uh, they're not in yet, but they will be in the next couple weeks. And then this entire area will be done. Ceiling tile. We're going to have ceiling tile at all three buildings popped out until two weeks before school starts because there's always somebody remember, holy smokes, i got to go back there. 
mark that pipe or mark that valve or did I really put the direction on that line the right way? So we always kind of see that until the very end. It's not a It doesn't mean anything's not finished. It just means they're going back to recheck and double check. So display cases are just waiting for the shelves and the glass in the back of the that back. Uh, tactical acoustic uh, material in the back of the display case, and then that will be finished for everybody. The out room, the ceilings are in place. Those are grids for acoustic clouds. Those tile will be set in place. Uh, it's really going to look pretty. It's, it's a lot deeper than this material. You can tell it's almost four and a half, five inches deep. It has a lot of depth and a lot of uh, perspective and mass to the ceiling. The music room is done, except the uh, Again, according to John, touch out has a pretty typical improvement on all the buildings as we get farther apart and farther along. Student dining, the flooring uh, is, is still underway. He says that should be finished uh, in the next week or so. All of it, the floor, the base, in its entirety. You can see the clapboard stairs in the, uh, in the distance. Those still have not, well, when they took this photograph, they hadn't been stained yet. By now, very well, maybe. I know they're really moving along at a very fast clip. All the equipment, kitchen equipment is in there, it's in place, they're just moving around. This is a photograph, you can still see some of it's still crated, some of it's unpacked, but it's all being moved in place and connected, similar to what we're doing at work. CAD lab, floors are laid out, they're ready to go in. Uh, it's moving along, uh, I don't see any problem there. He says the glass for the bar of lights is on, is on site. Those are all the frames to the right of the door, they call it a bar of light. Just gets a piece of tempered glass that allows light to pass from one room to the other, one area. The floor, uh, the field house, the uh, floor is going in. What you see there is the first application. It's a very viscous, like a glue that dries. You can actually walk across it, but it's the first step in the resin and pourable poured floor that goes in. And that flooring is underway as well. Everything else is done. Uh, the competition pool is pretty much in place. They're finishing up the decking around, and they expect, I think they expect to fill, help me out my memory. I, I want to say the end of this month, they're going to or the next, like, two weeks, they're going to start filling both pools, this one and the uh, uh, leisure pool. Leisure pool, again, they're down to uh, finishes on the floor, but everything else is set. The equipment is set. It's all been kind of tested. They just got to fill the pools and take it from there. I'm showing the YMCA, by the way, not, not our school at this point. Right. Everybody's favorite picture. That's not a screwed up color. Oh, ben. That's actually the color of the lights inside the steam room. Don't ask me why, but everybody wants to try it out. We're told them they uh, At least not until we turn it over, and then you might have to join the line. Uh, current wall on the exterior. Uh, there, the plywood that you see is glass that's ordered that hasn't arrived yet. Now, this is an old picture. A lot of this stuff that's on the sidewalks is already gone. Um, and John has been assured that the last will be there in time. We saw similar, the same contractors that we have at uh, Longfellow at North Octopus. And there's a couple things that are back ordered, but uh, we're fairly confident they're going to get here in time. If not, we have a plan for what to do with them. Second floor, the ductwork, drywall is done, it's been sanded out, painting is already underway. Once that painting is done, they'll get the floor in, and uh, uh, that'll be good to go. The ceiling is already underway. Uh, aerobics room, 100% done, except for the plywood underneath the windows. Those are vented windows, like they're windows that open outward, like an awning. And that's one of the, one of the items I do is uh, back order to try and get there as quickly as they possibly can. It's the senior center, by the way. I'm sorry. Thank you. First floor ceiling grid and windows. The grid's done. The pads already started to go in. Lights are, as you can see, they're in place. Devices at all three, well, long fellow, they're done in North. They're going along as uh, their approach there is a little different. We've asked them to go into every classroom and get it 99% complete as opposed to pulling all the wire, then going back and putting in all the wireless devices, going back and and putting in all the wall jacks. So when we're done with that room, we're going to shut the door, and unless somebody has a compelling reason to go in there, we're going to clean it and get everybody out. But John's taking a similar approach here. Uh, as soon as the areas are done, they're closing, cleaning it, closing the door, moving on to the next area. Sidewalks and concrete and curbs and site improvements are going in all over that south. It's a little different there. 
because the middle school demolition is slated to start a little later. So there's a lot of areas that are opened up to the site contractor, and they're being pretty aggressive about getting this all done. Um, his kids went to school. Well, he, he lives in the district, and his house is right up the street, so he wants to make sure he gets this done. Count loading dock concrete. Um, a lot of schools do this in asphalt. You are in concrete. You're going to be a lot better off. This concrete is going to be here years from now. You're not going to do anything but power wash. But it's in place. So you can drive on it. Uh, it's come up to strength. Teacher prep room. The drywall is done. Painting is done. Uh, the base is in place. Uh, that's pretty much wrapped up. Uh, we're going to have everybody in school. South certainly will be done. Longfellow is already done except for getting the other building down and getting our fire department connection in place, which can't go to the building spot, the old building spot. Uh, then we'll get our occupancy permit, and uh, so that shouldn't be an issue. North is going to be, it is a sprint. We've been sprinting for three months now. So we expect uh, to continue that. We're working Saturdays. The flooring contractor was actually there yesterday. Um, so it's, there's, if, you, if you go and see that building from one week to the next week, you'll see a different building. That's how quickly things are moving. And we need to keep that up. So, get you. Do you anticipate any issues with our opening day being the 10th for the community at North High School? No, I don't. Uh, I, I think we'll still be in the back of the, like I say, we're going to be hiding from the cameras because I'll have a two, uh, a, a, screwdriver in one hand and a paintbrush in the other, going out the back of the building as you're coming in the front to cut the ribbon, but yeah, I don't see it. I don't see the problem. Ben, would you mind um, reminding us why this happened? Something about steel in the beginning? Oh, yeah, yeah why? Just so sure. people know what's happened in North. Sure. So, at this point in a project, I'm usually, <clears throat> well, we never relax. <laughs> we are a lot more calm than we are right now, because at this point, we're usually done and we're running around going, scratching our heads, saying, how can we get the grass to grow fast? As opposed to, how can we get the uh, ceiling grid guys the heck out of here, said the electrician. So, the concrete contractor that went out of business probably through this project started actually at the wrong end of the building. Not a big deal. If we had planned that from the beginning, instead of starting in the academic side, we, we wanted to because that's where the heavy steel work, steel framework. They started at the gym and the, uh, the gym and the auditorium side. They had problems, whatever. We accommodated and we switched gears. And in the process of switching gears, the steel contractor thought he could still change gears, get the steel for the for the auditorium and the gym, and still make the schedule for the others. And he could not, so he fell behind. Uh, and he was late getting the steel at the academic. The latest one was A, and then once that was in, we ran into a real problem with concrete from uh, who could not buy concrete, could not buy rebar. He was in real financial trouble. And he ended up both his son. So um, it's not a pretty story, but we were able to mitigate that damage because we had, we had enough of his contract money left where we could go in there and finish his work and it didn't cost us for the project or anybody extra money. Uh, but it, it, what really what really threw us for a tangle here was the steel. Thanks. Somebody else have I just wanted to know if Longfellow's playground is going to be done. Oh yeah. By the time school starts? Yes. Yes we will. Great. Thanks. Who is that? Thanks, Ben. Yes, Ben. Thank you. Mr. Perkins, are there any who would like to speak? Yes, Mrs. Warren. I have uh, four individuals. Okay, so um, I'm sure that you all registered your intent to speak upon your arrival to the meeting tonight, and um, you requested to announce your name, address, a group affiliation if you have one. Uh, each statement made by a participant shall be limited to three minutes duration. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. The portion of the meeting during which the participation of the public is invited should be limited to about 20 minutes, so we should make that easily. Um, we would like to take a moment to review our practices. Um, we've added a new practice at the bottom of your sheet when you signed in. Um, 
you can have a response to your um, your presentation earlier, or you can um, choose not to. Then the superintendent, we're taking notes, the superintendent will have the answers and will give answers to your questions um, at the following board meeting. So if you would like to get answers before the next board meeting, please make sure you check that box, provide your email and a phone number, and we'll, we'll get a hold of you again. We're not here to banner, we're here to listen, we're here to um, hear your opinions. And with that, with that being said, Mr. Berkson, who's our first participant? Uh, Mrs. Stacy McWilliam. Thank you. All right, everybody. I'm Stacy McWilliam. Um, 36260 Valley Vista Drive, Eastlake. Um, parent, employee, taxpayer, all everything. Um, first, I would like to mention that I'm thrilled that our district is getting free new schools. When I look at these boards, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm a graduate of North High School, and I never thought in a million years that our district would find a way to accomplish that. That's what other districts were doing, not ours. So I applaud the district for putting up the bond issue, and I applaud the community for passing the bond issue. Um, continuing to put a band-aid on these broken schools was only going to last so long, regardless of what a lot of people believe. Um, in addition, um, I believe going into a partnership with the YMCA and the City of Willoughby was not only innovative, uh, but it was truly an investment in the whole community. Um, I hope we are an example to other communities in that respect. Um, with that being said, I'm having a very hard time understanding why the board chose to spend over $67,000 on a special election for this current levy request. I understand the need for the levy. We've known this new money was going to be requested for years and years now. I also understand that many schools and many cities are suffering right now due to the cutbacks at the state level that we have no control over. It's not just us, I know. I also understand that we need this levy to pass this year to keep our head above water without additional cutbacks. But what I don't understand is why we didn't put this request on either the, the May 2019 ballot um, with the second attempt on the November 2019 ballot um, if needed. Um, I look at the $67,000 from a school safety perspective and I wonder why we didn't use this money to implement new safety initiatives. Um, for example, we need, need, need safety task forces at each school. Uh, we've discussed this for over a year now. Our director of safety cannot be at each school in the district at one time. Um, what happened to this plan? Um, we were supposed to have mental health professionals available at every school, and that hasn't happened at every school. What are we doing about that? Um, how about a know the signs program um, that would teach both teachers and students how to identify a possible gun violence or suicide situation? Um, there are many, many resources available to assist with developing these safety initiatives. The Sandy Hook Promise is one of them. Um, I just don't feel like we're working hard enough to bring the students and teachers um, into the very important discussion um, surrounding gun violence, suicide, and how to prevent it. So with that being said, maybe the $67,000 couldn't have even been used for these programs um, because of campaign laws. That, that's not something that I know about, but um, please start talking about um, school safety and, and these issues. Um, Thanks, Stacey. Thank you. Is that, is that a good place to put right Actually, now? yeah, I was just okay. going to say that I, I noticed that that was one of your concerns on your work session last sure. week. Yes. yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Stacy. Okay. Mr. Parkinson, the next person? Uh, Mrs. Jane Soldiness. Yeah, we Do I have to go there with it? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. It would be great because I think that you're going to be on video, too. Oh. <laughs> I guess it looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jane, can you say your last name again? Uh, Dr. Soldiness. And I live at 3861 North Bay Drive, Little Bay, Ohio, so it's very close here. 
And I just uh, have a few questions, actually, that I just really wanted to amplify. I believe that I will integrate whatever our first speaker uh, said, that I was very surprised when I heard about that special election, because usually elections are in November, and now this election was not advertised properly. It was, I was able to find only one article in News Herald talking about it, and I pulled it and I looked at it. When I shared about this election with all my neighbors, they were as shocked as I was. So I don't know why it was handled this way. I would like to find the answer to this. There's no signs, there's no posters. Usually November election is coming when the tax really is, you know, trying to go in this placement of ballot. You see signs everywhere. You turn around, you see signs everywhere. In this case, there is none. So was that, I don't know, done intentionally? Just make sure looking for a low turnout? I don't know. So I can't speculate on that. So now, when we build these new schools, it's very nice to have these wonderful buildings, okay? And it's really, I was glad looking at that. But then, you know, we always budget. When we do something, we always budget for it. What is the operation, what the operating cost, budgeted or not, that someone looked at it or not, or we were just going for building it? Because I believe that TTP farm inclusive, I believe it was what? I just pulled, came home and pulled all the numbers together. And it was what? Now that could be redrawn in fiscal year of 2013? That's way, 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 way before these schools were built. So why nothing was done then? And how board was able, you know, how were you looking to cover the shortfall or just like go to your homeowners and, and tax them out of their houses? That's what it is, because this levy is hefty. This levy is $500 minus $1 uh, for $100 of valuation. And it's in addition, and it's that, what, fourth levy already that will be hit with? That's what you said. That's what you yes, said. Yes, no, no. $500 for 100000 Yes. Four hundred ninety-nine. dollars There is no bantering. We'll get you the answers. We, very, we still, very nice. Jane, I think you had another, and I know your time is up, I'm sure. But can you go back and ask, uh, tell me what you were talking about, um, operating costs? Yeah. Was this budgeted? Then you had a yeah. question and I didn't get the question. I don't understand, you know, when you build the building, right. okay, you have to, you know that you will have to run that job. Sure. And you can really easily calculate operating costs. If you knew, everyone knew that the TPP funds will not be available, that, that it's going to be a shortfall of funds. Was anything done to cover it? Okay. Or just it was like past the levy? Sure. I understand your question now. Thank you very yes. much. You're welcome. And our next person? I'm sorry, I can't. I cannot read the cursor, so I'm, so I'm not sure. How about the, can you read the last person's name? Yes, no, Joan Tide. Oh, that's me. Joan Tide. No, 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 no one writes in cursive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old person. I'm still doing it. You don't even teach it anymore. <laughs> I am Joan Tide, 4830 Highland Drive, Willowby, Ohio. I've lived in Willoughby since 1970. My daughter went through the school district. My granddaughter's in the school district. I've always supported every levy. But the fact that this one is on the outward appearance secret, I didn't even become aware of it until about three weeks ago. I'm a little unhappy there hasn't been publication. More information given so the voters can make an intelligent decision. And to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to vote for it. I haven't decided yet. I need more information. No, no comment return to me. It won't be necessary. <laughs> we'll get to the information, John. Thank you. I believe there's one more, Mr. Ferguson. Yes, Mr. Warner and Mr. Joseph Pinsano. Some of the people here know me from my posts. 
on the internet. Uh, Joseph and Santa, 36915 Valley Drive, East Lake. Uh, I moved up here after retired from the CIA uh, five years, six years ago. One of the reasons I'm living in East Lake, I grew up in Lake. One of the uh, reasons I moved to East Lake was because of the property tax value. Well, right now, our property taxes are getting close to that. Close to that. Uh, property tax values. And Menor has all kinds of factories and businesses that help them build these nice fancy schools. Now when I heard about this levy, I was a little surprised. I do not appreciate the fact that it's being done yet. I'm behind everybody's back. None of the property owners that I've talked to are aware of it and they're not happy when I tell them about it. And we're trying to drum up uh, grounds of vote to vote no. Just so you're aware of it. Uh, I've heard all kinds of horror stories. Now, my big question is, what percentage of the population have kids in the school system? 30%? Less. What percent of the population in the four cities in the district have seniors on fixed incomes living in? Now, there's this debate on how much it's going to cost us. 0.499% is over per 100000 According to the News Herald, it's $500 a month. I mean, $500 a year. Please remember that they're 20 year old reporters. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just going by their figures. I'm just going by their figures. Yeah, I understand. Uh, people on fixed incomes can't afford that. I've already got people that I've known that have moved because it's getting too expensive to live here. That's not the way it's supposed to be when somebody's lived in their homes here for 30, 40 years, being forced out of their homes. I see these, I, I love the schools. The schools are designed for reading, writing, math, sciences, not swimming pools, not field houses, and everything else that you do for the and if uh, we're getting a, a, a levy, as it was say, done behind our backs, the property owners' backs. So my, my, my basic question is, when is the school board going to send up notice to every property owner about the election? When can we expect to see a mailer explaining everything? No, no further comment. <coughs> Bill, can can you do the show the calculation and show the calculation in English? Yep. <laughs> it's very confusing. How you calculate taxes is very confusing, and people always confuse 4.99 mills with millions or dollars. It's not millions or dollars. It's it's not even the calculation. Obviously. It, translates it to dollars, but... All I know is every year my property values on my taxes go up three, four hundred dollars. My taxes went twice. The, 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 okay. only, the tax increases from the school district, the last one for general operating occurred in 2012. Um, we haven't had a new levy since then, which is the longest run in school history. And then there was the bond issue, which was in 2015. Know that bond issues can only be used for the buildings. They have nothing to do with general operating. And the general operating money has nothing to do with those build out of those buildings. They're completely separate funds. And the calculation that most people miss, which he's going to go over, is people confuse market value with assessed value. And Bill will explain that. Yep. So what Mr. Thompson is referring to under 3318 Ohio Vice Code, bond issues are strictly for construction. 5705 governs operating money, which is what this is. The two cannot mix, never can mix, ever. It's illegal to mix them. So the calculated property taxes, this is how you calculate them. <clears throat> so what Mr. Thompson was referring to, you take the market value of your home. Let's just say for easy math, it's $100,000. You're not taxed on $100,000. The state of Ohio taxes you on what's called assessed value. So you take the value of your home, 
you multiply it by 35% and you come up with an assessed value, value of $35,000. For $100,000. <laughs> so a mill equals a dollar of taxation for every thousand dollars of value. So you take the 35,000, you divide it by a thousand to get $35. You multiply that by 4.99 mills and you come up with $174.65. It does not cost $499. I tried to Google that News Herald article. If I find it, I will email the News Herald because that is grossly incorrect. That is the cost of the levy. So now, if you have a $100,000 house, that's what it's going to cost you over the span of the year. One year. One hundred now. Value Based on your assessed value, correct. so you take right. your home value. That's where most people right. miss. They yes. miss that piece of it, that calculation. <clears throat> so every resident gets a, a homestead and rollback credit of twelve and a half percent. You take that twelve and a half percent and you multiply it by the one seventy four, and you're actually going to pay one hundred fifty two per hundred thousand. And if you divide it out by month, you divide it out by day, it's about forty two cents a day. That's how it's calculated. Yeah, second time, we don't need a legacy of some concern because our uh, houses were calculated already. My taxes increased on 3000 of my income tax. The gross state taxes are going already to the schools. So, and uh, it's increased from 2000 so I'm now paying 3000 And plus, we're building a lot of new houses, mm -hmm. 130 just on the lost, part of the lost nation. What about these houses? Let, let me give you a really quick example. Everybody knows that Amazon left New York City. What if Amazon were to build their world headquarters in the Willoughby Eastside School District? How much money, new money, would the district collect? There is a number. It's zero. <clears throat> the reason is, is because of House Bill 920. What House Bill 920 is, is, regardless of what values do, raise or lower, school districts collect the exact same amount of dollars. I won't go into the math, but if you look at the two red squares, $12,412, that, <clears throat> what that calculation is showing is values moving up and down and the school district collecting no new money. It doesn't matter if our property values go up a thousand percent, it doesn't matter if they go down a thousand percent. We collect the exact same amount of money forever and ever and ever and ever without change. Well, yes, it is. It's in the Ohio Constitution. So I'm going to stop this bantering. I saw how this gentleman have one question, and then here, here's what I would tell you: that uh, there is a public, meeting, public tomorrow. meeting tomorrow night with Mr. Thompson. Information will be given. It is, it is at the Willowick Public Library. That's no, next tomorrow. No. Oh, tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow.
prices go up, our heat goes up, our water goes up, our electricity goes up, our everything goes up. And you heard Mr. Parkinson say, no matter how much we, how much the millage is, it stays the same. And so you have that line of sameness with money, and you have bills going like this. So until the, the Constitution in the state of Ohio is changed and school funding is changed, school boards really don't have a lot of choice. I don't like taxes either. I, I mean, I understand, and there's a movement out there for all taxes. So let's let's can, can have I this. Say one thing? Can it be like 30 Real seconds quick. or less? Your problem is with the state. It shouldn't be on the back of the homeowners. If you've got a problem, no, you knew about not. this years ago. <laughs> no, 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 if you've got a problem, why aren't you getting together with every other school board in the state? And putting all the heat on the politicians. I, I'm on a committee that serves um, across the state of Ohio with the, as many, many superintendents. We apply as much political pressure on our legislators as we can. And the message that Ms. Warner didn't even mention there was we're not just flat folks. We lost $8.2 million in state funding. So. It's virtual, and we've gone the longest run in school history without raising taxes, which is an eight-year run. Look at it historically. The system is set up that we have no choice but to go and ask the community but to why raise. Isn't this on the front page of papers? It's been in the. It's been found unconstitutional four times, four times, and yet the funding system remains the same. And that there was a lot of questions about mailers. This, this is our first mail, first of three mailers. It's in and going out to the homes within seven to ten days. Remember, everything we mail out, we can't use district money. We have to fundraise it privately, and that's the only amount of money we have to campaign with. So it, it, we're hamstrung all the way around. And we're on the ballot in August because if we don't pass in fiscal year 2019, It'll be devastating for our school district, and we have to have at least two tries. We didn't understand the complete impact of the loss of our TPP until it was too late to be on the main ballot. So, with that being said, look for information on uh, Support Willoughby Schools as to when these gatherings are, and um, please, and we'll see. make an appointment with Mr. Parkinson. He will be glad to, to also, help you out. Where's your office? Right Upstairs in the floor. Glad to meet with you. Yep. Yeah. Or you could call them, uh, Cheryl, and tell them somebody who will get a pad. That's the second I find that article. I, I will absolutely not mail that author. That's ridiculous. That's quite uh, cool. that article myself. It hadn't been recent because no, they just started trying to get this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just search the school board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys very Thank much. Very I appreciate much. it. I mean, the more I do something, you know, talks about the brown town, and they break it down into counties. Uh, maybe that would have been a, a, an appropriate place. Then you'd have used as well on the plain dealer. You have a lot more people with a plain dealer on Sunday than they do necessarily with a material. Good idea. So that might have been a better venue. We still have time for that. We'll give yeah, a I, would, I would think about that one. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. 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 Okay, we move to section two. Uh, if you want to leave, you're certainly welcome. Oh, you got your business. So, what, what business? Pardon? What section two? Oh, it's the minutes of the last meeting, but we're going to go right to uh, Mr. Thompson. has some guests he'd like to introduce to us, so if um, Mr. Thompson will go ahead and do that, if you need to sneak out and go somewhere, feel free. Um, as, as I think most folks know, um, uh, the diversity in our district and the socioeconomic, the, just the, the, the face of our school district is changing, and we want to be encompassing uh, and, and of all of our students. And so we've reached out for some help. Um, and we've contacted Carla Chapman. She works for Akron Public Schools. She's the Director of Community Relations, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Now that's a title right there. That's a mouthful. Um, she began her career at Akron Public Schools in 1994. As the district's director of community relations, she works to promote active students, staff, and community engagement. Her recent work includes a focus on diversity training, coaching for teachers, 
school leaders, families, and other professionals, and that's the piece, the component that we know we're missing and we are reaching out for uh, and for help with. She earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from The Ohio State University, go Bucks, right? And a Master of Arts degree from the University of Akron. She holds a number of certifications, including divorce and community mediation, adult experiential learning, and diversity and trauma training. And the back end of that is what we are most interested in. So without further ado, uh, Ms. Chapman, I'll let you introduce your team and um, just yes. give us an update. Well, thank you, Superintendent Thompson and board members. We are very excited to be here, and congratulations on the rollout of your new facilities. We are finishing up numbers 32 and 33 uh, as we that. speak in Akron. So greetings from the Akron Public Schools. I am here with two of my colleagues, Mae Walker and Andrew Zaccardi. will be the team that will come and support your district's training. Um, we facilitate dialogues around understanding our students beyond academic measures and really going deep in terms of how do we leverage the unique and different ways of students come to the table so that we can enhance learning and build the kind of effective, positive relationships with our students that support their success. And then finally, just to reflect on our own cultural sensitivity and understand our intercultural competence so that we can become better teachers and teacher leaders. And so we are excited to be here. Um, you've got about 80 years of experience yeah. across the three of us here. I know we don't look it. <laughs> you have about 80 years of experience across a number of positions in our district. And we've been doing this work as far northeast as Perry local schools and as south as Amanda Clear Creek in southern Ohio. So it is growing. There's more and more interest because of our changing demographics. But the bottom line is that we're preparing our students to live in a global world. And so we want to be sure we are equipping them to navigate across many different dimensions of diversity, far beyond race, but age, socioeconomic status, the experiences, all the way these dimensions of diversity. So thank you for having us, and uh, we appreciate you taking a chance on this opportunity to come and do something different. Well, we appreciate it, and you can't got more you bargained for it when you came <laughs> well, I mean, we, we understand the joy and pain of levies and school bond issues in our district as well. Thank you very much. Do I leave anything out? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And feel free to slip out if you need to. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the meeting. So I'm looking for approval of the minutes of, of the board meeting on June 10th, 2019. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Jones. I motion to minutes of June 10th. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there a second? Madam President, I second that motion. Dr. Beal, thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the meeting June 10th, 2019. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Perkins, will we call the roll? Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Herring? Mrs. Warren. Yes. Motion is carried. I'm looking for a motion to approve item 2B, approval of the minutes from the July 2nd, 2019 meeting. This was a work session we just had. Madam President? Mrs. Zerman. I make the motion to approve item 2B, approval of the minutes of July 2nd, 2019. Thank you, Mrs. Zerman. Is there a second? Dr. Beal. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the meeting July 2nd, 2019. Is there any discussion? I will say it was a very um, productive work session, and um, if you, when you get on board docs and see the minutes, you'll see we um, worked on district goals and we worked on a self-evaluation of the board, which we are continuing to, to 
to work on, um, hope to have that, that completed by the end of the summer. Mr. Parker? Yeah, Mr. Parker, somebody call the roll? Mrs. Zuri? Yes. Dr. Deal? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes, motion is carried. Mr. Parkinson, it's time for the treasurer's report. Then to Mrs. Warner, members of the board, for your first item for consideration, our final appropriations for fiscal 19. This is required by the auditor of the state's office, and the information can come to the day. <coughs> item B, for your consideration, are the final amended certificate of estimated resources. Again, this is the letter of the state's office and the county auditor's office. That information can be found. Item C is the Ohio Department of Education funding of school district uh, federal and state grants. <coughs> Excuse me. These are the grants that have been uh, approved by OBE and are ready to be implemented uh, upon your approval of these appropriations, which will represent a change. I know the, I did an estimate for state and federal grants at the uh, prior uh, month to, to get out a uh, appropriation in place for the fiscal year. This will modify that information. <clears throat> Item D for your consideration are, are the establishment of uh, petty cash accounts. Uh, per the auditor state, we are required to list the amount, the designated official, and the building location in which the petty cash is located. These uh, petty cash amounts do follow four policies purchase order policies, uh, requisition policies, and policies of the school district. Item E for your consideration is the establishment of change funds. Again, this is required by the Auditor of State's Office. These are for the North and South High School Athletic Programs, and these dollar amounts represent actual change to be given out at various sporting events um, to individual buying tickets, professional so on. Item F for consideration is the travel payment and reimbursement rates. There is no change to the travel payment and reimbursement rates from the previous fiscal year. They will remain exactly the same. Item G for consideration are purchase orders and delinquent certificates. That information can be found on item G uh, for review or consideration. Item H is an advance of funds. This is to the food service fund in the amount of $293,000. Item I is return of advance, uh, food services returning monies to the general fund, and then information on item I. Item J is a transfer of two unclaimed funds. <coughs> this particular amount of money, um, there was a check that was written to a particular organization, that particular organization, for whatever reason, has never cashed it. That has been in our accounts for a number of years, and per state law, we are to move this into an unclaimed fund status. And it is kept in a separate fund that is accounted for by an office, and we report that to the state of Ohio, and then the state of Ohio handles. Uh, is it enough to keep us off the ballot? It's $118.36. <laughs> 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 for microseconds. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, item G, for your consideration of transfer funds. There are uh, two. Uh, one for your consideration. The way the state auditor's office requires that the district transfer money is the office basically says the only fund that's allowed to transfer money is the general fund. So when we have an account like this to close, even though it's going within the same fund, I have to move it out of that fund to the general fund and from the general fund back to the fund. Don't ask me why, that's what he wants. So that's, uh, so that's, uh, that's item K for your consideration. Item L is the grant acceptance. There are two, or I'm sorry, just one for your consideration um, for the upcoming school year. Item N is a student activity program and purpose goals and proposed budgets uh, for next year. Uh, those are all listed under item N. Per the Auditor State's office, uh, these must come to the board for your consideration, not only to include the budget, but the purpose of the uh, activity and the goals of that activity. We've attached to all those two. <clears throat> item N are gifts and donations. We have one uh, donation to uh, Grand Elementary from the grant to the PTO. And then lastly for your consideration is the sale of surplus equipment. 
by public auction or scrap. This is a uh, 20-year-old truck that has long out, long outlived its usefulness. Um, we're proposing to list this on, we're going to try to debate, but it may be another public auction site that we try to, to, to get rid of it. And if we can't get rid of it, then we can scrap it. And those conclude that. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. It's now time for the superintendent's report, and I see that we have a safety update. We do, Tommy. So, Mr. Johnson, um, who is filling this year and promoted to the position of operations and security, um, he is going to provide us with an update on security. I'm excited to report some good news, some good things that we have coming up in the next school, school year. Um, thank you. Our current safety program that we have in place is the bullpens. The bullpens that are existing, we have new ones coming up in the next school year, which will go on in the next segment. Security cameras. Security cameras, they are outdated. We need to upgrade them every, it seems like every couple of years. We're in the process of doing that, and it's going quite well. 3M film, we're very proud to be one of the school districts in the area that really promote this film on all our doors, all our windows. It's in, in a two-year process. We're in our, well, a year and a half right now we do it, uh, doing doors and windows. That's going quite well. The Raptor Visitor Management System, which is a system that is in place where we scan your license and it'll say, you're good to go, come on in the building, we welcome you to pick up your student or just come visit. Alice Training is a training program that we do with all the teachers and staff and it goes on throughout the whole school year of just training for safety and students as well. Yes, thank you. And then we have the Marks Radio. This radio system is Lake County's radio system. It's not our local school district radio system. It is a response as if there's an incident in a building, they press a button. You'll see in the segment I have coming up that all of Lake County police and fire start coming to that, to that button, to that call. It's a very, very great tool to have in the district. That was something uh, she made last year. Collaborative safety meetings. We meet with the fire and safety every four months and just kind of hash out different ideas of what, what they see and what we see in the building. How can we help them? How can they help us? It's been really a good tool to have. Our SRO uh, officers, another great tool. That is a unique, it's not just a police officer. Here's someone that builds a relationship with students. It's a really a neat uh, tool to have in building with these officers. Motorola, I'm proud to, Steve and I have worked really hard on this. I'm trying to come up with the ultimate radio system, quick response. Phones don't do it anymore, cell phones don't do it anymore. So we reached out to several radio companies and Motorola has got the state of the art radio system that we can now reach. He can reach any building with just a click of the button of the whole, the whole district or certain buildings or certain quadrants of buildings to say this is a lockdown mode, this is what we're doing next, and it's really going to be a, a super tool to have next year. That will be coming next year. Our upgrades to our existing is our SRO officers. We increased hours coming up this year. Another expense, but it's well worth it. The SROs are very important to have in the buildings. And we added one to East Lake Middle School also. Navigate. This tool is one of the tools we have that plots all the buildings. This building's been plotted in Navigate, showing all the fire extinguishers, going pole stations, and it's teachers can get on it and see what's going on, how how do you really get out of the building at easy access points? Navigates a really, really good tool. Here again, the Motorola the Motorola system will be able to reach every building. We've had tests, multiple tests uh, with antennas, and Motorola is the one that had the best coverage for the whole district. Bullpens. We had two new bullpens. Everybody's wondering if we're ever going to get to Edison. Well, Edison's done. Thomas Chatham's for saying will be done by the first of school. They'll be ready to go. 3M film, 
we have right now four crews working eight hour days, working on existing buildings and new buildings. As the new buildings are ready to be filmed, the guys are in there filming. So the new film, the new buildings will have also have the new film installed. Is inside where you have the collaborative areas where you have the big bay doors, we also put the film on that. Security cameras, like I say, we're yeah, they just keep getting better and better, so we want the best. So we keep going up, and we found another security system, uh, camera system that when we're done, not only will the SROs be able to pick up the information, Mr. Thompson can pull up information from his cell phone. He will be able to see what's going on throughout the whole history. 24-7. Yeah, 24-7. Upgrades in 2018, 2019. We had our evacuation drill. This one was a little crazy. We didn't know how it was going to go, but it went extremely well. The students were cooperative. They stayed with their teachers, stayed with their classes, got to the safety zone. We had flags that everybody's here, flag went green, we're good to go. Red, hey, we got some issues, we figured it out, but everybody went green and we headed back to the building. This is off site. This was probably two to three blocks away, possibly, in some locations. Some further. But, in some further. And the students were great. I mean, they stayed in line, they stayed on the sidewalks. We had a police force there to help us with, if there was a bad intersection, to take up the assistance. They will also be monitoring when we do this again. It will be, at every evacuation, they will be involved. They want to be involved. Lunch with Blue, that is the cool thing. The um, SROs and some of the, the uh, police force will come in and just sit down and have lunch with the kids. They just talk about the day, how things going, how things going at home, how things going at work. It's a neat, neat thing they, they, they're doing. And here. we bribe the police by giving them a free lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to get donuts, too, and we'll have donuts with the police. And that's such a terrible thing to say. <laughs> I, was a, I was a military police, I can say. But we are trying, we do offer them, honestly, free lunch to try to encourage them at any time to, they're on the ship and stop in in uniform and eat with our kids. And the kids, the kids really enjoy it. And they it. do. Yeah. They do, periodically. And then the Crossroads Counselors, we're always trying to, it's a very important, if we have a situation of uh, someone that has, somebody passed on the building needs help, it's great to have the counselors there to, Crossroads there to help out an employee and help them work through it. Do we have Crossroads, you know, we said last year we'd have crossroads employees at every school, but we couldn't employ them. That, that's where the system failed. They simply couldn't find them. And when they did find them, they would stay three or four months and quit. Yeah. So this year, and, and what we discovered was that the crossroads employees would work all day here and then go back to crossroads, and they'd work until eight or nine o'clock at night and then pay them $30,000 a year on top of that and worked in tw not 30, well, maybe less. Well, when you calculate that for an hourly wage. Oh, it's a horrible hourly yeah. rate. And then a strap and then they had then they had them work all summer. Mm -hmm. So our agreement with Crossroads now is we gave them a sign on bonus. It wasn't a lot of money, I believe it was five hundred dollars to sign on with the school and fifteen hundred dollars at the end of their contract if they complete the whole school year. And they only work the school hours, they don't work at crossroads at night, and they only work 10 months and earn the same amount of money they would have made if they worked 12 months. So that is the incentive to try to get them to, lack, to stay the whole year and keep consistency. So as it stands right now, we have two left to hire, but we will have a crossroads person at every single building in our district. It's provided we hire the last two hired. So we're doing everything we can to fill those and keep them. Reconstructing of the operations department, as you see, we did a little bit of configuring with Mr. Thompson, a coordinator of operations and security and facilities and transportation management. Um, it seems to work out well. We have meetings once a week with Mr. Thompson. We sit down and strategize what's going on for the week, what's coming, what the past, past week and the following week. This worked out quite well. Our blue light um, building lockdown. This is something that we want, we reached out to the city officials and they thought it was a great idea. So with this, you're going to have um, if a car pulls up, 
into a building and this blue strobe light is flashing, it means that we're in lockdown position. Just please leave the premises, get to a safety zone, call the school, say, hey, what's going on? Is it just a lockdown or is it just a drill? Then you come on back. It's also the same for the buses. They're going to be trained in as a bus pulls up with students. If that light's flashing, just keep on going. Call dispatch and find out what we're doing from here on out. It's going to be a real good tool to have because people come up to a building, they don't know if we're in lockdown mode. Meanwhile, we're in a situation where they should be gone, get out of here, get, get away from the building. We have a little video here. Hope you enjoy it. The lead in this is quite handsome. <laughs> At least I've heard that. I'm not the lead. Apparently no one is. <laughs> oh, well. Oh. Thank you, Pat. I'm trying. <laughs> Radio, they're they're not cheap, um, but we do. You do. You've seen radios all the time. You've seen staff on radios, but they are analog, not digital. So these are bouncing off repeaters. Uh, how many repeaters? Steve? Eight. Eight repeaters across the whole school district. That's what allows us to communicate. And there you see the blue light. That's obviously Edison, and you can see the blue light there. So that blue light will be strobing. 
if we're in lockdown. Um, so is there we'll, another one visible for the buses? Yes, yes that's there is. Right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There are multiple. Right. There it is. You okay. see it there? Okay. So there's one where parents w would probably drop off and one where the buses are if they're separate. Okay. So the, like, this is your Mark's radio. This is yes. the co county, Lake County wide radio. Once you press that red button right there, you cannot stop what's going to happen. They're, co <laughs> they're coming to that button, whatever, wherever it's pressed. The, and the secretary could hit it dive under the desk, for example, and it's speakered. So they could still communicate from, a, you know, not across the room, but within a few feet away from it. But once they hit it, the response time is three minutes. I think you might have seen this video before on the 3M glass. You'll see it's not bulletproof, but it is very, very difficult to get through. So um, all of the places where you see, you know, our garage doors with glass, the first floors with glass, the doors, et cetera, et cetera. They're all getting this film, and you, and you can see how tough it is. Now, there'll be always one window left in every classroom where it is not applied so that we can go out that window if we needed to, um, and obviously we'll never promote what that window that is for obvious reasons. But you can see it takes, that's a pretty good-sized guy applying a lot of pressure even with bullet holes. It would take so long to get through our building. If, we're, if the doors are locked. There's Edison's bullpen. Um, so they're trapped in that section. So that was probably our most difficult building to yeah. um, to figure out how to do it. Um, but it came out pretty nice. We did the, redid the ceiling grids there, trying to dress it up a little bit, up and down both hallways, or both sides of the hallway, yeah. correct? Yes. So it looks a little better there. Example of some of our um, our quarterly meetings that we have. Um, they're usually with the police chiefs, fire chiefs, and sometimes their designee detectives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, come. Um, that's where the blue light came from, mm -hmm. and some other ideas came from. idea actually from college campuses. Very common to see them on college campuses. So that is basically what we're just trying to get out into the community. Um, we've made a lot of initiatives in safety. Steve has focused heavily on that. Um, and um, we have you know, spent a great deal of money on trying to improve safety and security across the districts we have. Bullpens are not inexpensive. The 3M product is not inexpensive. The Motorola radios were about hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Um, so we have spent um, quite, a bit of money. quite a bit of money to try and improve safety. So will you still be sharing the security bowl then, or have you taken that on? He's taken. That. I'm going to take it. So on. you've taken that yeah. on. Mm -hmm. I'll assist. Yeah, I'll continue okay. to assist. Mm -hmm. But as, as any superintendent, I think would. Um, Mm -hmm. My role is overseeing the projects is going to slowly wind down hopefully here soon. And then I'm, I'm working into this uh, uh, starting next month in the security operations of the district. Okay. So how will people be referred to, to crossroads? Keep going with the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought it said questions up there. I saw I had some. Okay, gotcha. Because that's a different question, too. The question is, Steve was good. Now yeah. that's, that's crossroads, so that will be Steve and he'll get you. Okay, okay, I gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Stacey. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Thank you. And now we move to um, item 5, the superintendent's resolutions. Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we, we, we have a section on here from the previous board meeting, but there were no questions presented at the previous board meeting. So, Obviously, I have a list of questions here, and I will probably meet with Stacy and probably square her way pretty, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So maybe even after the meeting, we have time. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so that takes me to okay. resolution. So the first item, Madam President, for the board's consideration is an addendum to the Food Management Services Agreement, which is item B, which I will be asking you to fill. Um, this is with our current vendor, Chartwells. 
Um, and so in our the second addendum is our plan to make sure that we break even. So we have budgeted to, I believe the dollar amount is to earn $1,000 or so. The, uh, the objective from food service isn't to make money. The objective from food service is not to lose money. Uh, that, that's, that's the objective. So um, that's what you see in item A for an addendum. You have heard the superintendent's recommendation. What is the board's pleasure? Mr. Jones. I motion to approve item 5A and item 2A. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there a second? Madam President. Mrs. Zern. I will Mr. second 5A. Thank you, Mrs. Zern. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 5A, addendum to the food service oh, agreement. Food management services agreement. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Parkinson, we call the roll. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Zern? Yes. Dr. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Warner? Yes. Motion is carried. Mr. Thompson? And Madam President, item C for your consideration is the, or excuse me, item B for your consideration is the actual food management services agreement with Charter Wells. Uh, one of the highlights to add, um, they will run our smoothie station. Um, they will incorporate our students in, um, in the process of learning how to run and manage that as well. Um, and we have probably the biggest addition in this contract is we have a chef at North and a chef at South. Um, and they'll specifically be focusing on the Mongolian grill um, and the menu choices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yet our total cost, um, our, um, you know, our net loss is projected to be a thousand. Thompson, you have heard the superintendent's recommendation. What is the board's pleasure? Madam President. Dr. Beal. I make a motion that we approve item 5B, food management services. Thank you, Dr. Beal. Is there a second? Madam President. Mr. Jones. My second motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 5B, food managed services agreement. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Parkinson, we call the roll. Dr. Beal? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Zerin? Yes. Mrs. Warner? Yes. Motion is carried. Mr. Thompson? Um, thank you, Madam President. Item C for your consideration is the Mayfield Consortium Career Development Program Grant Agreement, um, and that is uh, part of the agreement of being in Excel Tech is that all contribute um, funds based on student population that is then used to resupply tools, et cetera, et cetera, that would be needed. Thank you, Mr. Thompson? Again, you have heard the superintendent's recommendation. What is the board's pleasure? Madam President. Mrs. Zern. I make the motion to approve item 5C, Mayfield Consortium Career Development Program Grant Agreement. Thank you, Mrs. Zern. Is there a second? Madam President. Dr. Beal. Second, second, that motion. <laughs> second, that motion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Beal. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 5C, Mayfield Consortium Career Development Program Grant agreement. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Parkinson, will you call the roll? Mrs. Hearn? Yes. Dr. Beal? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. The motion has carried. Mr. Thompson? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Item D for the board's consideration is the Edmentum Renewal. It is the platform that we use for Plato and our course, uh, course offerings uh, online and credit recovery and it's our study item. So all those things wrapped into one agenda item um, for approval and this is a renewal of that contract. So it sounds like you said Play-Doh. Play-Doh is part of it. <laughs> Plato, or is it Play-Doh? That's the toy. Yeah. Play-Toh. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> that is correct, right, Gina? That is correct. Thank you. Not Play-Doh, right? No Play-Doh today. No Play-Doh, no not Play-Doh. Play-Toh. We could get you some if you want some. I, I, I would love some. Okay. <laughs> Stress release. So is Play-Doh uh, an acronym now? A trade? Play-Toh is... It doesn't stand for anything. It's just the name that they have for that particular courseware. And it's pretty much stated in York. I mean, most everyone likes Play-Doh. <laughs> Do you hear him saying play or is it Do I say play play toe? <laughs> it does. Again, you have heard the superintendent's recommendation. What is the board's pleasure? Madam 
Mr. Jones. I motion to approve item 5D and meant to move. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there a second? Dr. Beal. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 5D, Edmonton Renewal, involving Plato. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Perkins, will you call the roll? Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Zarin? Yes. Mrs. Warren? Yes. Motion is carried. Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Item E for your consideration is salary increases for the adult instructors. These are <coughs> the teachers that teach, obviously, adults in the afternoons in our evening programs, um, and that 1.5% increase is consistent with the rest of our staff. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. We're looking for a motion to approve item 5E. Madam President. Mrs. Zern. I make the motion to approve item 5E, salary increase for adult program instructors. Thank you, Mrs. Zern. Is there a second? Madam President. Mr. Jones. I second that motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 5E, salary increase for adult program instructors. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Parkinson, will you call the roll? Mrs. Zern. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Dr. Beal. Yes. Mrs. Warner. Yes. Motion is carried. Mr. Thompson. Madam President, item F for your consideration is the 2019-20 fee schedule, and they remain unchanged from the previous school year. Item G for your consideration is the 1920 co-curricular fee schedule, again, remains unchanged from the previous year. Item H for your consideration are the lunch and breakfast prices, um, and you can see the slight change in um, the cost for lunch. Um, is an is increase of a dime. The item I for your consideration is the personnel agenda. All the folks that are appear on the agenda uh, are subject to satisfactory records receipt from the Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation, the Iowa Department of Education, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation before they can become permanent. Thompson. Meeting notification is item 6. The next regular meeting of this Board of Education will be on August 12, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. right here on the first floor of the Willoughby East Lake Board of Education building. It's now time to uh, find a motion to approve the consent calendar. Mr. Jones. I motion to approve item 7A, adoption of the consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there a second? Dr. Beal. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we approve item 7A, the consent calendar. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Perkinson, will you call the roll? Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Zucker? Yes. Mrs. Warren? Yes. Motion has carried. Um, we are going to adjourn to executive session to discuss an employee situation. There will be no other business after we return from this. Um, I would like to let you know that Mr. Jones is getting married next Saturday, so we wish oh, you all well. Yeah. 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 Walk down the aisle and do it. <laughs> so that's great. So thank you for coming to the meeting. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn to executive session. Madam President. Mrs. Zern. I make the motion to approve item 8A to adjourn to executive session. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Jones. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn to the executive session. It is 8.29 p.m. Mr. Parkins, can we call the roll? Mrs. Zern? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Beal? Yes. Yes. So adjourned. Thank you for coming.